Welcome back to another episode of Bobby Guy Films Foul Fridays. Foul Fridays consist of tips and tricks to uh, all things waterfowl related, whether it's scouting, shooting, decoys, whatever. Uh, so tell your friends, tell your cousins, tell your uncles, tell your Amish aunts, tell them to uh, get technology so they can go get a cell phone so they can uh, click that subscribe button. <laughs> Just kidding, Amish people are cool. Uh, it's a joke. But anyways, let them all know. Tell them to check it out. Tell them to come comment. They're uh, great questions. So we can cover them. So, in the uh, pre pre bleh, previous Foul Fridays video, I stated how I wanted to do these Foul Friday videos in order, as far as process goes, to you having a great hunt. So, scouting, blah, 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 blah. This one is all about how to both hide and sit your decoy spreads mainly in the field. This isn't going to be about anything water related. Mainly in the field, mainly goose hunting, but these tactics work identical for duck. So let's dive right into it before I end up making this thing 30 minutes long because I got a lot of information to cover. So let's roll. So to start this one off, once you have found your birds you're going to hunt, you've got permission on the field, or you're going to traffic the birds. If you don't know what trafficking means, go back to the previous videos, and uh, I teach you what trafficking means. So, your options about sitting in the field. You usually have two options in a field. Usually two. First one is uh, sitting in a tree row, so you can get better head, so the birds won't see you, especially tree rows are optimally, optim optimal, and are used optimally <laughs> for fields that are green wheat and uh, a little harder to hide in in those uh, laydown blinds. But your other tactics are uh, sitting up and cut wheat, cut corn, cut milo, uh, cut beans, whatever else. The cut corn and cut milo are a little easier to set up in. So these two options involve a lot of different scenarios between the two. A lot of different options between the two. Dealing with tree rows, birds don't land close to tree rows. We all we all should know that. I'm sure you do. Uh, but they don't land close to to, uh, to tree rows. So it's a little harder to hunt them. You're going to have a farther shot. Anything over 30, 40, 50 yards is considered a long shot in my book. The prime option that I've had, that the most success that we've had as, as a hunting group, is sitting in the middle of the field, you know, sitting right where those birds have been landing, have been feeding for days, and uh, getting that close range shot. That is the that is the most optimal way to have a good hunt. But when you have those wheat those those green wheat fields, it's hard to hide in them suckers. So uh, those are your options. The ones you pick, man, all up to you. I got some options for you if you're wanting to sit in the middle of that field, though. Corn, milo, those are easy to hide in. They have tall stalks. As far as green wheat fields, a lot of you have been watching my prior videos, seen us dressed in all white, killing dark geese. I'm going to let you know that there is a video coming, and I'm going to do it the next one after this. Oh, that is the most common asked question, is how are we killing darks uh, out of white? So a lot of... Uh, this hasn't been covered. I'm going to uh, I'm going to inform you, and I'll probably have a lot of people mad at me. But you know what? You're going to learn sometime, and I want to be the first one to let you know. Gosh darn it! So be looking out for that. That's going to be the next one. So to get notified, just go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the bell, and it'll send you a little email message when that sucker goes up. Be sure to tell your friends. Moving on. But in those green wheat fields. Uh, a lot of times we have found maybe a post or an old well or something in the middle of that field that has some tall weeds and maybe uncut, uh, uncut tall stalks of any sorts uh, from the past, you know, farm season or whatever, past crop, where the farmer, where the farmer cut around that pole. You can, a lot of times I've found, you can, you can fit three or four laydown blinds in those suckers. So look for those things and use them. If they're on the property that you got permission on, use them tall weeds to hide in if you found that green wheat. Because we know 
uh, uh, Canada's especially, but all, all geese in the wintertime, per primary food is those green wheat fields, and they are a sucker to hide in. All right, guys, I've talked about wind before, and I'm going to stress the fact of if you want to have a good hunt, look ahead in the forecast, a couple days, the day before especially, look, look, look in the forecast a day before especially, and uh, see what that wind's going to be doing. Not necessarily the speed, who cares, but see what that wind's going to be doing. Birds land into the wind. So if the wind's coming at me, if the wind's coming at me, they're going to be landing behind me. If the wind's coming from my back, they're going to be landing in my face. And that is optimal. Get them suckers landing in your face. Wind always helps with motion in the decoys. So uh, I, am ne I never bash wind, even if it's a bunch. A bunch. Even if, if, even if the wind is just kicking, I never bash it because it gives us motion in them decoys. And that is prime. Quick tip number two. If you can, put the sun to your back. Now you can only do this uh, if the wind is out of the east. So, if the, if the wind is out of the east, that is, that's, oh, that's gold. Because therefore, your face isn't going to be lit up. You don't have to hide as much. You'll have a bunch of shadows from whatever you're hiding in on you. It, it almost blinds you in a little more. So, one, wind. Two, sun if you can have them both at your back wind out of the east prime but in the winter we all know that the, that the wind is primarily out of the north and sometimes out of the south so it's not too often you get to shoot birds like that not being blinded by the darn sun quick tip number three i'm going to go back to tree rows a little bit just real quick if you decide to hunt out of that tree row set your decoys at minimum 20 yards away from that from that tree row because if you set them too close, your decoys are going to be too close to that tree row, and they are not going to like that. If, if you have decoys too close to the tree row, that is a no-no. Birds will flare 100 yards out, 200 yards out before they even get over you. But if you set those uh, decoys at minimum starting at 20 yards out, that ensures your kill pocket will hopefully be, if the birds act right, will hopefully be in that 30 to 50 yard range. Kill pocket. What's kill pocket, you ask? The kill pocket is an area in the middle of your is an area in the middle of your decoys or wherever you decide to place it according according to where you're sitting that the birds are going to be landing in that 30 to 50 yards shooting range. The size of that pocket, that kill pocket, it is directly associated with how big the flocks you're going to be having decoy in per flock, per group. So this field, when you're scouting, you need to see how big your groups are coming in. If you are having a whole roost come up and move to you at once, or maybe twice, two big, two big shots of maybe 500 to 1,000 birds at a time, or even 200 to 300 birds, you need a huge kill pocket. Relate your kill pocket to the size of the groups that are going to be cycling in to your spread. So, moving on, this video is called Sitting Your Decoy. So that is now what we're going to focus on. You've got your spot, you've decided where you're going to sit, and according to the sun and wind, wind primarily. Now, it's time to sit your pattern of deeks. The only pattern that I'm going to talk about today is the U or the V pattern, whichever you want to call it, whichever you prefer. I'm only going to talk about this one today because, I'll be honest, it's the primary one that we use. There are some times when we find some smaller uh, feeds to where the birds are landing and are naturally a little funky when we go and scout them out, but today I'm going to primarily just hit on and completely slaughter the U pattern. It is great for wind, so if you have wind that is 10 and above, this is your pattern. So, for a very dusty demonstration, if you sit your decoys like this, so this is our V or U, you are always going to have one side that is longer than the other according to the wind. So, this setup for wind. You're going to have one side longer like I stated, and this setup 
you'd be sitting here, like I had just stated also, the wind would be coming from this direction. Boom. So the geese are going to be coming this way, and they're going to run into this long wall and land into the wind. Coming this way, landing into the wind. So the wind is to our backs, whether we're sitting here or anywhere around here. Now you see all the decoys, how I've dotted them around. I mean, this is just a demonstration. This isn't necessarily how many decoys you have to have. So just a demonstration here. Really populate where you're going to be laying down. If you're in white, this works perfect for white, hunting out of white, like, you, like I've just mentioned. Uh, any, any really filled lay down hunt, this, this is a great pattern with a good wind. You want some high concentrated areas. These can be a little thinner. The real factor of when you scout the birds and you see them. Uh, this is our primary primary setup. But what if you look close here, we got a family group here, here, and here. These you can move around. A lot of times uh, you'll forget them and go back and put them in. This just gives it that additional real factor. Each each one of these groups only you only need to use about five to seven decoys here or there and primarily you don't even have to have three groups if you have if you only have enough decoys for one five to six seven deek uh, little family group do that if you feel you have too many like three three is quite a bit if you feel like you have too many take one out add it to your concentration of where you're going to be sitting adding to the natural real factor so when you sit this spread and uh, you get it all set you're ready to sit down, the sun's coming up or whatever. When you're done sitting this sucker up, walk around the entire outside, walk around the entire inside. So around every portion of it, you do not want hard edges. I, I kind of learned this the past two years, found it out how vital it is this year. If you see just a line, like they're just lined up, it's a, literally a U get rid of them suckers as you'll see here some are spaced out you can even take them out farther you know whatever especially this back edge make them how they come out it does not have to be conformed you don't want it to look like a u it's your, we're just going to represent the shape so uh like this huge bulk back here you can have that that's going to be where you're sitting or if you're sitting here have that big bulk here but make sure there's no hard edges so as you can see when you're sitting this close, man, you have to blind up. If you're, if you're in lay down blinds, make sure that you're going and, and blinding them up thick. Uh, sit it in between your blinds, fill in between each blind to uh, so there's not you don't have lines of green uh, or, or whatever the case may be, however you're hunting them. If you're hunting out of white, really lay some white snows in here and uh, get it thick because... Uh, you're just going to be laying out there on the bare ground. If you go watch my videos, you'll see exactly what I'm what I'm saying there. But anyways, I wanted to cover the U pattern because I know there are literally a million ways to set up decoys, and especially set them up how they've been sitting in the field and and what you think is going to work for you. I know that the U pattern seems like you might have to have a freaking million decoys to do it, but you really don't. I, we've been using this pattern ever since back when we had only five or seven dozen dozen uh, decoys. So we've been using it a long time and it's been working for us. What the hell? I don't know why I'm wearing this thing. Oh yeah, yeah I do because I said this is gonna be the next video. So I know this was all about spreads and uh, how to sit, how to sit your spreads, where to sit in your spreads, sun, wind, everything else, we're going to keep the spreads going because when you wear white, when you hunt out of white, to kill dark geese, to kill snows, it doesn't matter. Yes, you, hold up, hold up. Some of them don't know. Some of them don't know. Some of them don't know that this is the most asked question that I get on any given comment when we hunt out of whites killing Canada specs, snows, whatever it might be. It works, it's extremely effective, and I'll, I'll be honest to say that it's easy. So this is something that's up and coming. Nobody's hit on it, it's been a big secret. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the uh, old cat out of the bag here. <sighs> you guys want to learn it, I understand you wanna learn it. And I tell you now, it does take quite a few decoys and wind socks, so. Be looking out for that video to come. I'm extremely excited to let you guys in on that. 
It's been used a lot for killing snows, but it's a brand new form of hunting to kill in dark geese or specks or, or whichever ones other than snows or blues or whatever that, that you kill. So, you can shoot ducks. I mean, it, it, the options are endless to this, so tune in for that mother sucker next week, next Friday is when that sucker is going to be going up. But be sure to go click that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and uh, come on back because these foul Fridays are going to be packed with the intricates of the how-tos on spreads, tactics, decoys, shooting, ammunition, duck calling, goose calling, all the above. It's going to be packed all spring, all summer, all fall until this next season comes up and we get busy up in the field. Leave your comments down below. If you have a question that I haven't hit or that maybe I overlooked that, you're, that concerns you, that you don't know, that you want to learn, let me know down there. I, re, I literally reply, guys, to every comment. Go ahead and go to the video, scroll through, and you will see that I do comment on every one of them suckers. If your comment and your question is good enough, I will do an entire video on it. But we better end this thing before it gets too long. I truly want to thank you guys for watching, for hitting those buttons, for subscribing, doing all that junk, uh, because I am here to help you guys, and when I see the response and I see the channel growing, it, it does nothing but make me work harder. So put them comments in there. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just put it in there. Just, just leave it. Just click that subscribe button, you know? You know, for your boy. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.